Now, first of all, this is not about trashing tools like Elementor or page builders in general, but we all need to be understanding of the fact that they do come with the inherent issues. One of those is speed. And as we know, Google uses this as a ranking factor and a lot of people and a large industry has grown up around actually trying to make page builders faster to load, easing the load on the server and just making them more responsive. Even the page builders themselves are going out of their way to try to streamline things, but there will always be that inherent issue because of the amount of code that they generate, loading them in, working with them and all manner of other reasons. So choosing a more streamlined, lightweight tool set for different kinds of projects may be a great way moving forward. Can you do everything these page builders can do? Well, if you want to have a visual environment where you don't have to get your hands dirty, possibly not. But if you are comfortable just doing a little bit of tweaking just to get things up to running the way that you need them to, you may find these a great option. Now, first of all, I would recommend if you are considering moving away from a tool like Elementor, Divi, those kinds of things, or you want to just test the waters, or maybe even run it in parallel for various different projects, is building the right tech stack. Now, a tech stack is a glorified way of saying a set of tools that you want to combine together to start building websites. Choosing the right ones that complement each other and work well together can be the key difference between a seamless project and something that goes a little bit rougher. Now, the first thing I would highly recommend you do is choose the tools that combine and work together flawlessly. The easiest way to do this is picking a theme and a block set of tools that are built by the same development company. Therefore, you're going to have the highest level of compatibility and the least problems when there are updates rolling out. So what's to consider would be things like Cadence, where you've got Cadence, the theme, and you've got Cadence Blocks, which is the block set of tools. Another one, and probably my personal recommendation right now, would be Generate Press and Generate Blocks. It has a smaller subset of options included in the Blocks Builder, but what it does have is a rock solid reputation for creating a really robust set of tools. They're also very soon going to be rolling out a key new feature, which is the ability to create your own query loops and a loop builder. This is going to open up a lot more options for things like listing websites, more advanced blogs, or just generally giving you more control over the dynamic way that you want to create and build your listings. Some other tools that I would recommend taking a look at because they are very, very interesting and open up a lot of great options would be tools like the Plus Add-ons for Gutenberg, which is a relatively new set of tools, but it has a lot of options included in it for working with dynamic content. And we'll come on to dynamic content a little bit later. Now, next of all, I would say to also take a look at Quickly. I'll put the spelling to this and all the links in the description below so you can check these out and take a look if you want to. Now, Quickly was recently over on AppSumo and I grabbed a lifetime deal on there, but it very, very quickly went from there and it may be coming back, I don't know. But Quickly is a very interesting Gutenberg set of tools. It is a theme and a kind of block builder tool set all in one. So you don't need to have a separate theme to work with this. And it has a lot of really useful and powerful features, including a lot of dynamic content features. It also works as with most of these different block editors with the Flexbox, those kinds of things. So you're gonna get the maximum options for flexibility and designs using modern technologies and ways of moving forward. Hopefully they will all embrace not only Flexbox, but also the CSS grid moving forward if they're not already embracing that technology right now. These are things that we need to make sure that we can get flexibility in our designs, streamline the whole process of building websites, those kinds of things. Now, I'm sure you've already got a couple of questions already spinning around in your head that you want to ask me. And let me try to address some of those right off the bat. But obviously, if you've got more questions or specific questions, let me know in the comments section below and I'll do my very best to answer as many as I can. So first of all, you may be asking, what about dynamic content? That's a great question and something that this channel has kind of built a big foundation on. The good news is most, if not all of these tools, these block builder tools and many of the themes allow you to integrate dynamic content into your whole design process. They'll have varying degrees of support, but they all allow you to do the basics. So if you want to create your own custom loop template layouts, those kinds of things, you can do those. You can also create various different kinds of options using that in conjunction with the various different tools that a lot of these themes actually come with. 
Now, a good example of this would be the properties listing website that I created using the Bloxy theme. It's a relatively simple layout and setup, but it has all the key things you need in there. Custom fields, custom searching and filtering, custom design layouts, and so much more. Now, if you wanted to take this even further with more custom designs, then you could use Cadence or you could use Generate Press alongside their block level tools and create totally custom layouts using the various different functions. For example, in Generate Press and Generate Blocks, you can use the Elements feature, which allows you to inject into any part of your design or create totally unique designs with a lot of different functionality. Again, one of the reasons why I really do highly recommend checking out Generate Press and Generate Blocks because you can really get into a finite level of detail building your designs and your layouts. There's so many well thought out and well crafted tools and options inside there. And this is something that I will be creating some tutorials on over the coming months, showing you how you can create these more intricate designs, integrating dynamic content into things and using these tools to really replace a lot of what can be done with the page builders that you're already typically used to working with. Like I say, benefits of this is you don't need to spend huge amounts of time afterwards going through and optimizing every little feature, every little thing, turning off things that don't need to be done because the themes, the tools are already optimized and they don't have that heavyweight nature that a page builder generally brings to the whole design. So keep an eye out on the channel for those new options and these new videos coming pretty really soon. Next up, what about global styling? Now I'm sure that if you're using page builders like Element or Brizzy, those kinds of things, you are more than accustomed to working with the global styling. It speeds up making changes, making color changes, font changes, typography changes, all those kinds of things, an absolute breeze. Well, the good news is most of these themes and most of these block editors all have those options built in. So if you're not using a combined tool set like Generate Blocks and Generate Press or Cadence and Cadence Blocks, you're still going to have these options either at a theme level or a block level. So you should have all those boxes ticked off just to make life so much easier. What about the design options? Surely they can't have the same level of design options as a page builder has. Well, in all honesty, most of them do. You're already looking at a lot of page builders using Flexbox, the Flexbox model. Some of them are using CSS Grid or will be using CSS Grid in the near future. Well, a lot of these already have those tools integrated into it. And while the whole process may be a little different, I think you'll find with a little bit of experimentation and spending a little time learning how these tools work, you can really easily replicate most designs and layouts that you can do in a page builder. And if you can't do it straight out of the box with these tools, a little bit of CSS knowledge can go an awful long way to creating even more unique designs where you don't rely solely on the features that are built in. You have the extra tools that you need to be able to easily embrace and include those custom CSS options. So again, most of these options for designs and layouts and so on can easily be recreated inside tools like Generate Press, Generate Blocks and so on. Now, well coded, you may be asking, are these well coded designs and tools, you know, are they optimized for speed and for flexibility and, you know, across all the different kinds of devices? Well, the simple fact is, if you're taking a look at tools like Cadence, Generate Press, those kinds of things, they have a reputation for being generally well coded tools. They don't have the extra bloat that a page builder brings with it. They're optimized for speed and a great starting point. And as long as you follow some simple basic rules to make sure your designs are not overly bloated, so you're not using massive images, huge pages, all those kinds of things, you should start off with a much more solid platform to work with and optimizing as you go through the process of building should be considerably quicker and easier with less reliance upon lots of optimization tools to speed up what's an already bloated endpoint to try to get it to a quick, fast loading website. You're already starting with a better starting point, if that makes sense. Like I say, you do still have to follow some kind of best practice to make sure what you put together is still generally well optimized. Now, responsive designs, you may be asking, well, it's very easy to work with responsive designs for mobiles, tablets, those kinds of things in a tool like Elemental, Divi, Brissy, those kinds of things. Can we do the same thing with these kinds of combinations? And absolutely, you can. It's very, very easy. Most of these block level tools have easy options for setting up tablets, mobiles, and so on. So you can adjust your design to make sure it looks perfect, pixel perfect on all the different kinds of devices. Like I say, no real difference there to using a good quality page builder. You still have those options available. 
Now, what about updates? This is something that obviously, as a WordPress user, as someone that uses things like page builders like Elementor and so on, you do have to have a healthy dose of fear when an update rolls out. Yes, you need to make sure that you have backups in place and you stage insights, all the normal things. But I think you can probably rest assured that when there's an update, especially if your tech stack is using complementary related tools, like for example, generate press, generate blocks, cadence, those kinds of things, because they come from the same developers, they're going to be tested with the theme and the actual block level tool. Therefore, you should have less of a concern. Plus, there are many, many options that we are using third-party plugins to bridge the gap between tools like Elementor, for example, dynamic conditions and so on, that are already built into these block level tools. So by not having so many third-party tools, it does alleviate a lot of the stress and pressure that you have when these update rolls out. So that is something that I would say is integral to all kind of WordPress. You still need to make sure you do those backups and stuff beforehand. But I do think there's less pressure on you, less stress on you when updates roll out by using a complementary tech stack. So that's basically what I wanted to cover in this video. It's less of a tutorial, more of a, my thoughts on moving forward using tools like Gutenberg and so on, because I know a lot more people are looking to make that transition away from tools like Elementor and so on for various different reasons, or you're looking for ways in which you can combine Elementor for certain projects and a smaller, lighter tech stack for other projects. I would say that while I've been a strong advocate for avoiding Gutenberg for a long time, I do think now that the environment, the ecosystem is growing around Gutenberg and making it something that is becoming a more usable tool. Out of the box on its own, it's still very, very limited. But pairing it up with a good quality theme alongside a good quality block editing tool set, you can do an awful lot and have a lot less stress and worry and anxiety moving forward when updates roll out. But as always, I would welcome your comments and feedback. Drop those in the comment section below. All the applicable links for everything I've covered are in the description. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.